what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on the linkage between the fourth house and the ninth house yes 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 fourth house of happiness peace comfort and enjoyment <laughs> and the ninth house of god spirituality religion and the scriptures and your father and our gurus all right therefore if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those people who want to know how are the fourth house and the ninth houses linked all right and before beginning as i always say and today i must say because we are going to discuss about the ninth house all right God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will definitely find him in the ninth house. All right. There you go. So what is the fourth house? Fourth house is the primary house of settlement where we go and ultimately rest. It is known as the pillar of the horoscope because that is where our mind is. That is where our inner comforts are. That is where our inner peace is. Our mental peace is seen from the fourth house. All right. And generally we find peace in home generally yes that is why it is also the house of home where it is opposite to the 10th house where we go outside and fourth house is when we come inside the home and that is the where a place where we find our highest level of fulfillment and we come and rest and we go to sleep yes that is what is the fourth house and there are so many people who come and there's a very nice atmosphere around the home at least it is supposed to be like that may not be the case always if there are malefic planets in the fourth house all right especially planets like saturn or Rahu. now what is the ninth house ninth house represents our gurus god etc we all know about the ninth house now both are very good houses <laughs> the fourth house and the ninth house i mean every house is good because it wants to teach us some lessons even the dustanas the sixth eighth and twelfth so i have made videos on the dustana houses and if you have not watched it then please go and watch it Many people have appreciated that. Okay, solutions to planets in the Dustana 6, 8 and 12. And it is there in this playlist itself. All right. So now, although the fourth house and the ninth house are beautiful houses, but somehow <laughs> they do not have a very good relation with themselves. Yes, with each other, I mean. Which means if you make the fourth house as the ascendant, then the ninth house, where does it go? Count. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, it goes to the 6th house. Which means, the ninth house is viewed as a dustana from the 4th house. Which means, 6th house is the house of discomfort, displeasure. Yes, we all know about it. Some form of austerity is involved whenever it comes to the 6th house. Yes, some form of voluntary acceptance of pain actually that is the meaning of austerity voluntary acceptance of inconvenience or voluntarily when you accept some sort of difficulty for a higher purpose that is what is the sixth house yes now when you go six houses from the fourth house you reach the ninth house that means when you activate the ninth house there can be some level of displeasure in the fourth house yes which means that Let's take the example, Ninth house rules this uh, holy voyages which people take, which in India is known as Tirthyatras. Yes, even Muslims, they will go to Makkah. That is also coming under the Ninth house uh, in Hajj as they go. And then even many Christians also may go to the Vatican or Jews may visit Jerusalem, uh, depending on your religion. So now, what is the Ninth house? Ninth house also rules long distance journeys. Yes, Twelfth house also rules foreign journeys, but Ninth house also rules very long distance travels. So that means, the moment you go to a Tirthyatra, yes, or a holy voyage, you may not like it very much <laughs> because it is not very well placed from your fourth house. So there will be some level of uh, discomfort which is uh, destined to occur there. Yes, that means, when you go to a holy place, you may not find a very posh hotel to stay there. You may not get a Rolls Royce to go there. Yes. So, sometimes people tell me that, oh, I want to go to that holy place, but there is no good hotel there. <laughs> so, the lesson here is, whenever we go to a holy place, we should 
put aside the considerations of the fourth house because they do not go well together all right so we should not go to a holy place and search the perfect hotel for us to stay because that's not the purpose of the holy place because if we want to have a good time materially yes then we can go to any other place like in india there are there are places like goa where they will just go and they will drink wine they'll go with women sometimes with a bunch of women <laughs> or sometimes with their spouse or with your friends and they will drink 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 till they die yes and finally they will come back and then they will attend to their offices their bosses will be shouting at them and then they will put a smile in facebook yes and that's what is the materialistic civilization so if we want to have a good time materially that may not happen in the holy places yes because there we might have to stand in the queue so many the temples they may have so much crowd in them yes we may not get food sometimes the prasad may get over yes sometimes there can be some other austerities as if people go to different places i personally have been into south india and then there are so many temples where uh, there are different uh, procedures which are there yes sometimes you are uh, expected to fast also sometimes and especially places like kanchipuram is very powerful if you can fast there so basically what i am trying to say is when we go to a holy place we have to understand that we may not be very well comforted there yes because from the fourth house it is not very well placed so we should not be uh, pricking our heads there <laughs> yes like i know myself uh, sometimes i see people they go to tirupati the holy place tirumala hills when lord venkatesh is there yes i have been there twice luckily in the year 2011 and again in 2013 very luckily by god's grace by the grace of lord venkatesh himself of course balaji and then i had gone there and i had a very good experience but then the line in tirupati is very long you see but there were some people who were complaining oh this line is so long this problem is there that problem is there <laughs> the people are not nice the food is not good this is not good that is not good but the point is we have not come here for good food or a good line or we have not come here to check if the water in the hotel room is hot or cold depending on our preference yes so when we go to a holy place we should keep the purpose in mind yes what is the purpose of going to a holy place to see to to see god first of all the second and the most important thing the most important purpose is to go and take enlightenment from the holy uh, personalities who are sitting there so whenever you go to kanchipuram or tirupati or to badrinath why i am quoting examples from south india because i have personally been there or even if you go to jagannath puri sometimes or you go to dwarka or you go to mathura or you go to vrindavan or you go to ayodhya wherever then it is very important that we not only just go there physically we also go and take enlightenment from uh, the holy sages who are there yes who are connected to the parampara there the tradition there and who are also willing to uh, explain us of the significance of the holy place for example in tirupati there is Uh, above the tirumala temple there are different so many different places are there like yes and then when we go to places like tanjavur which is there in south india which has a very big shivlinga there yes so we should also visit the nearby places and we should also take bath in the holy rivers which are residing near to that place that is also very important yes so the narmada river is there in that place and then so many other rivers now we have when we go to rishikesh na haridwar then we have ganga and then when we go to vrindavan there's yamuna na. so many rivers are there so when we take bath in those rivers it can be a bit painful <laughs> because it may be very cold or it may be very hot so we should try to bear it yes because the purpose of going to the holy place is not to seek material comfort so we should voluntarily leave the material comforts and we should be very happy when you are undergoing those austerities because when you are doing austerities in the holy land we it is said our sins are getting removed we are getting purified from our sins all right and we should always also uh, try that we walk barefoot because by that we are doing more austerity yes we are voluntarily accepting pain in that holy place as they say it is dham 
so when we visit adham then we uh, can encounter different uh, challenges there so i have seen uh, people who are very eager also to go there to visit very good if you are like them but even if there are some difficulties we should try to tolerate it and we should not try to superimpose those difficulties on the ultimate purpose of the dham yes then going uh, the purpose of visiting the dham is lost because if you are going to uh, sri rangam suppose so you may not find a very good hotel there to stay <laughs> you may not find a three star hotel in sri rangam south india which is the headquarters of the shri vaishnav sampradaya there so there when you go and you visit anand padmanabh who is the vishnu form sleeping there you should not have a face round like a pumpkin mm, the hotel was not good <laughs> because then even if you see anand padmanabh there you will still be thinking my god the hotel was terrible <laughs> the auto wallas have snatched money from me this happened that happened of course that doesn't mean that you behave in a way that you pretend as if you are avadut avadut means even if somebody comes and beats you nothing happens to you it doesn't mean like that okay it simply means that you be normal you be as you are keep a hold on things keep a guard if there are some thieves they may steal your money they may snatch your money they may snatch your valuable belongings yes so we, we don't have to behave like avadu that okay he wants my mobile take it no no we, we don't have to behave like that but if there are some inconveniences because many times people message me that oh i cannot go to that holy place now it's very inconvenient that this problem is there that problem is there that problem will be there but what you get there by going is much 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 more higher than the problem which is uh, there on a mundane level all right and also it is very good if we can go and fast there if possible because especially places like kanchipuram in south india is very famous for austerities it is known as tapa mandap yes uh, tirupati is known as pushpa mandap <laughs> shirangam is known as bhoga mandap yes and kanchipuram is known as tapa mandap which means that when you are going to kanchipuram it is essential that we do austerities as much as possible yes at least fasting till 6 pm and then after that we can take prasad there and especially when you visit kanchipuram you can visit the famous varadaraj temple of lord vishnu and you can also visit ekambareshwar lord shiva's temple and then there are so many places to visit there all right and then when you are visiting tirumala hills tirupati you can also visit the vara chetra which is above that if i am not wrong <laughs> if, if i am wrong somebody can correct me maybe because i went long back so i don't remember much and then when we are visiting shirangam because it's a very big city we can also visit all the temples and ramanujacharya's place where he was the pro- most prominent acharya of the sri vishnu of tradition we can also visit there okay and also the most important thing is we uh, go and visit the people the uh, the brahmins from that parampara who are there who have been serving from dynasties centuries from millennia in fact and we can go and ask them and inquire that how this temple came into existence who was the one who was be instrumental behind the, this temple hmm? so we we should go and enquire and then we should have a divine experience by that for example if you go to rameshwaram then there's this 22 holy wells where we are we must take bath so it's a very good experience there at the same time there can be some difficulties so we need to tolerate the difficulties and we need to keep in mind the higher goal which is there which is the ninth house okay so when we are going on a pilgrimage we should keep aside the considerations of hotel of luxury car food and all this all right and if we want that only then we can go to some materialistic place like goa or we can go to some other place in india and we can have fun there yes so that is it from my side i hope you have understood what i wanted to say like all my other videos <laughs> all right that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know or if you have had any bad experience in some place that also you can let me know and how did you deal with it yes how did you see the higher purpose even if you had had some bad experiences that also you can let me know and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website and if you are new then please subscribe to it okay so that is it from my side wish you good luck in traveling to holy places okay bye bye see you